We're on episode 16, but I'm not gonna count anymore after this episode. This on the screen, I'm screen, no, I'm not screen recording. Now I'm screen recording. This is the Genesis rear suspension multi-link. This is actually what I went over in the seminar that I just did. I'm basically running a seminar with 10 to 15 people max. You can choose a date that works for you. I'll keep updating this. It's bi-weekly, Wednesday, 6 to 7.30. I essentially go over how to design workflow, design concepts. You can read the whole description here. But if you are interested in learning how to do things like this, you can easily sign up for this. It's me live with you over a Google Meets and 15 other people. We do half an hour of questions at the end, but essentially you're gonna watch how I do what I do, which essentially is what I'm showing you guys, but I don't ever go into detail on how to do anything. So that's what I'll be doing in this. Anyways, back to the Genesis. We actually did this with the group of guys. This is really cool. This is what uh, we're gonna be building. We've actually already got all these arms sent over to laser using our billet blocks on pretty much every control arm which is really cool. And we also have the OEM arms here simulated with all of their extended lines that pass through the ball joint. So this is where we're able to see your anti-squat, your uh, scrub radius, where all these lines converge and intersect with each other, what they are doing under um, compression. And it's actually really, really cool to watch if we hide the wheel and start like cycling the suspension. You can see what these lines are doing. It's absolutely wild. Um, this one would be considered pretty interesting. Our trailing arm and our traction arm and how they are positioned. And if you lower your car, how much that can absolutely destroy any amount of anti-squat, which is gonna affect your grip and everything else. What the toe arm starts to do. These five links actually have pretty good toe control once they get under compression and throughout their movement. They, they do tow out a little bit, but it's not a lot. It's not nearly as bad as some other suspension systems. And yeah, you can really see what you'd be able to calculate our roll center. I have done motion studies with this, but it's very, uh, how should I say it? Temperamental. Okay, yeah, see, so it's not working. So I set this up, I close the program, I open it back up, doesn't really work. I'm sure we'll get fixed with the next update but Fusion has done an amazing job at making things better and better every single time. So that was something that was really cool that we designed. I'm gonna be working on more educational displays. This is the Roll Center one, pretty cool. How it works on the screen and then how it works in real life, it's identical. I'm gonna be making camber next, something that you guys might think is really simple, but then you could make it really complicated by trying to explain how many things affect camber because essentially camber isn't just something that we measure statically, it's something that we care about all the time. So making a display that's gonna represent that is not gonna be easy. I'm gonna try my best because I could just have a big wheel and then I could just lean the wheel and I could just say that's camber, which would be correct. But the way that we wanna do these by educating people and teaching people about these um, principles, it's not so easy and we don't like to half-ass anything. So. Can't say, uh, we're about to show you, these, this is really simple, but we were able to just prototype and 3D print things so quickly and put them into use. We created a working arm wrestling display that's right behind me, behind Jack. Joel did all the programming on the Haltech. I think you guys have seen it before. Go there, go there, and back. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, back's tough, eh? Okay, six seconds, and back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, back's tough, eh? Okay, six seconds. One. Oh, that's fast. 4.85. Yeah, go. Two, one, go. Ooh. I gotta extend it. That was quick. All the way up. 5.5. Oh, I, need, I need another run. Yeah. Using the 3D printer and using everything out in the shop, we were able to put this thing together all for the PRI show where this is going to be displayed in the Haltech booth. Let's check it out. The down is tough. Yeah. <laughs> the down is actually not better than the last one. It's really it's hard. Sense. But it's blowing my shoulder out. Here, let's try this. No, that's way worse. <laughs> no. It's better? Yeah. How was that better? 2.2690 to 2.286. I'm blowing myself off the seat. 
Oh yeah, you need a seat with no wheels. I want under two, somehow. It gets really difficult to get far. That's why you said this way would be easier. Yeah. But then if you're going backwards well, against your, the harder damp your right arm. Well, the dampening's harder this way. Right, so you want more so How are you gonna... I would need to be... I might need to stand. <laughs> oh, I'm left-handed. There's yeah. no way. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gonna be just... Like, this way is fast, and then you're just... Cuts. Oh, 3.6. So standing, I should be able to like lean so the shoulder doesn't get all court. There you go. Yeah. It's up two. Let's standing. go. Standing is the move. Because the don't. shoulder can't handle the right. range. Right. I'm also left-handed, but there was nothing. 2.58. Not bad. That's, That's the first one. Worse. That's the first one. Okay. I don't know if there's a sub two in it though. Jeez. Go back. Oh, oh that's tough. Oh, he's good. Right, look at my wrist. Yeah. You what? gotta lean. You gotta lean. You gotta lean. Oh, that's hard. Oh, it went red oh, when it was in the 10. It goes past 10, it goes to red. Oh, no. What's going to be funny is if, like, Grant and all the guys that have tried this before come in and see that, they're going to have to beat it. It's probably going to be in their YouTube videos as well. This is definitely, we're on to something. It's really basic. We can go through, actually, the dampening of the two-way coilover. But what's the coolest about this is Joel added this bump stop, which is really nice so that we don't wreck the sensor. And Joel's gonna go over how this actually, what the controls are, what we're actually um, measuring here. Because some people are gonna think immediately, oh, is it force, is it this, is it that? We have a damper, it controls the rate at which a spring is allowed to act. So what is this? So basically we wanted to control uh, our time how quick someone can cycle through the compression and rebound. And we've got it all maxed out right now. So we have the entire shop. And even when we had all the guys come up for ice racing last year, we were timing everybody with our phones, but obviously that's not like super accurate. Maybe somebody doesn't go all the way and they're cheating a bit. Yeah. So we put some data on this. Now I can tell exactly when you get to full compression and then full rebound. So we added the screen with the Haltech IC7. We've got your distance here. So it goes all the way to 100 millimeters and then back. And then this is your time. And then, uh, yeah, basically it stores your, uh, your time down at the bottom. So the trigger is as soon as this sees more than two millimeters of travel, then it starts the timer and then it pauses it as soon as it comes back to less than two millimeters of travel. So this is a quick way to start the time. So now somebody's not sitting there with a stopwatch, you basically trigger yourself. Whenever you're ready, you go. Some people who are left-handed, right? Boy, that's more. You're over 11 seconds, 12 seconds. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> Just warming it up. Let's have a mess of water. Oh, it hit it. Oh, oh, oh. Can't leave? <laughs> no. Can you never <laughs> Joy used two hands. I thought it was just free eight. Go on the harder side. Okay. Oh, oh, Aussie? Uh, three, four. Three okay. point four. Okay. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, and then you roll with it with your body. Uh, 2.5? Yeah. Oh, 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 there you go. There you go. Oh, you didn't reset the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we go through a full cycle, but it's gonna rip it off the table. It's not mounted. Yeah, but you can still see as I'm going, if this is our distance and this is our time. And essentially it's a graph that is distance over time. And we have to complete a full cycle in order for the timer to stop. And this at a trade show is 
the exact type of engagement that you would want in a booth where you're probably going to get a line of people while people wait, while people laugh, while they interact. You're going to have people saying their friends were cheating, one of their friends is going to beat their other friend. It's going to be a fantastic time as long as the table, you know, has enough room and that it's, and it's bolted a, down well enough because be with this thing at its current settings of damping, it's actually quite quite hard. Yes. Um, it was pulling itself out of the clamps yeah, on the big table. Yeah. Like if you give it everything that you have, like you got to have your feet planted, the table's got to be secure cuz things just start flying. People, objects, but that's essentially um, kind of encapsulating what's possible with design time and what you can do. Now, this is something that's been happening more and more often. We just got asked if we could make a wheel display using an ABS sensor to uh, choose a certain point on the wheel's position for an encoder. And then I said, well, why don't we put a brake caliper on it, a Willwood brake, put the master on it, either do a handbrake or do a foot brake on the ground, and then actually stop this wheel at a certain position. We're starting to get on a trend because we have these abilities to design anything. Things like this at trade shows, if you're looking for activation, I don't think I've seen anything like this, and no, I don't think you could beat it. Phenomenal engagement. Because this is a, this is a, there's, a, there's women there too, don't get me wrong, but this is a bunch of men. Men. <laughs> Showing off. Men want to compete. <laughs> yeah, we do. Men want to win. And, oh my goodness, if they put a prize of some kind to beat a certain time, whatever that may be, Haltech, that's totally in your court. Or BC, I mean, they could throw up a set of coilovers. Hey, I could ask them. Yeah. But whoever gets the fastest time of the weekend can't have an elbow fall. Like, we gotta go taped box. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a Cannot ref. leave. Yeah. You're right, once you get involved with winning big things, you're gonna have to have some, maybe not. Maybe not this time. But <laughs> what you would do, actually, which would be easier than paying somebody to watch it, you would actually put a sensor here that would disallow. Yes it would fault out the settings. That's gonna take more programming. Maybe we'll do more it More sensors time. from Haltech, a pressure sensor. Gotta oh, keep easy. pressure on it. I think they'll actually be like, okay, run with it. Give it all you got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, you want, we want an ECU, yeah. PLC, this, sensor, sensor, pressure sensor. Like, hey, don't tempt us with a good time. Yeah, let's go. Like, we'll build the table. Actually, the jig table worked almost the best because you can kind of like reposition it in place. But it's just, it's really exciting to do things like this because although it has actually no value, there's, no, there's nothing that this does for you where our entire business is based on solving problems, doing things for people, creating solutions in the, in the market. This is just purely for fun, which might actually be the best form of business model that you could People engage with fun. Yeah, people pay a lot for entertainment. It could very well be the highest form of what they pay for. So, featuring on design time first. We are releasing this very soon. This is our Billet Dual Master Booster Delete. You've seen this for the Corvette. We've been selling it for years. What makes this even cooler is we have added a universal firewall plate. This firewall plate is just a piece of steel with no holes in it. You're gonna be able to connect this to any car if you have some minor fab skills of drilling holes or cutting off excess material that you don't need. You're going to be able to connect this to your car and essentially run what I run on my pro car and others run on their pro cars. But it's going to give you the ability to um, increase your pedal ratio using this lever. The problem with the direct master cylinders that are sold from Willwood, sold from a couple other companies, Chase Bays, there's actually nothing wrong with them. But if you're trying to increase your pedal feel, have better sizing for masters so you don't have to run like a ridiculously small master to get the right ratio. You have enough fluid pushing because when you reduce the size of the master, increases the uh, amount that you have to push the stroke so that the pedal has to travel more and it can really throw off actually how a pedal feels. So this system is gonna be available soon, fits right into design time. You guys are probably gonna see this in the next month or so. That is it, nicely CNC machined, anodized black. We're off to PRI tomorrow and uh, we'll come back with I'm sure some interviews, some content, and you know, the goal this year is slightly different. We're going there to get work and bring it here at FTF to show everyone what we're capable of doing. Whereas other years prior, I've always focused on me as a driver, who can sponsor me, doing things like that. Not gonna not allow that to happen if it does, but the focus is definitely more on business and what we're capable of, which is a lot. And uh, we're proud of it. So see you guys in the next episode. Peace.